Hi Arvals, Subhash here with the Honda City Hatchback, the RS eHGV version, which is their flagship. We already shot the review for the sedan version, so I thought I'd give you a likes and dislikes video using the hatchback version. Of course, you might have to wait a few months before the full review is out because labor issue. So I'm just going to give you some likes and dislikes. The first thing I like is Honda's perceived quality. So you feel this perceived quality once you get into the car. I don't think they use a lot of exotic materials. You know, most of this is just plastic and a lot of it is hard plastic. But the way it comes together and the little touches, Honda always gets it right. I mean, just listen to that. And I think it comes down to like using switch gear from their most expensive models. And that is something I really like and it sets Honda apart from their rivals. And now onto something I dislike. Equipment is somewhat lacking. Now this is a very expensive small Honda, but if you go into reverse, all you get is a reverse parking cam. Five years ago, it would have been okay, but in 2022, I think you need a 360 degree camera. I know it's a little bit much to ask, but its rivals already have 360 degree cameras. What's more, they don't have a blind spot monitor. So instead of using blind spot monitoring, they use Honda's Lane Watch, which is this camera mounted under that mirror. Some people like it, but I think a blind spot monitor, at least an alert, lah, some light or some sound, that would be a much more useful feature. You know, even more fundamental things, like sorry, I'm pointing at my crotch, but there's, there's no power adjustment for the driver and this car is what a hundred thousand ringgit it's a little bit lacking la. and i think the most fundamental feature that is missing is auto power windows man there's only one for the driver everyone else you have to hold down i think honda could benefit a lot from changing this because even on some of the more expensive models they're still doing this auto only for the driver very strange omission for a flagship level car with so much technology and since we're talking about equipment i have to go back to something i like about this honda which is that it offers a lot of equipment that is not available on any other brand. Let's start with Apple CarPlay. It's available on this thing. You just need to bring a cable around. Some cars double this price don't even have this. Things like the steering wheel being fully leather wrapped. In a lot of other competitors, they will give you something that, you know, on paper sounds the same. It is also leather wrapped and all, but Honda's one just feels really, really good. Things like Lane Watch. I don't think anyone else does this. Um, I quite like it for limited scenarios, but really things like this the Honda exclusive ultra seat system So you can fold the seats down like this very very flat all the way down to the boot Or you can fold it up like this. I actually did use this to transfer some plants It is actually very useful and of course I think my favorite Honda exclusive feature well nearly Honda exclusive feature is well, you can walk away and the car locks itself. But even more impressive is the remote start ability. So you press lock and you hold down this button and the car turns on itself. You see the hazards blink and the car will turn on the air conditioning on full blast, cool down the whole interior. I think it's super useful. You know, right away when you enter the car, a lot of cars in this segment, you have to press the button to unlock. Here, you just have to touch it and it unlocks. And now something I dislike. I think the city's identity is really starting to flounder. I get it's not so important at this price point. You just got to deliver maximum value to your ASEAN customer. But you look at this car and it doesn't really have its own thing going. Some people said it looks like an Audi A1. Some people say it's inspiration from the G20 3 Series, from the design of the taillights. You see the Mercedes motif plastered on the seat covers. I mean, think about this versus the Civic. Everybody knows what a Civic is, right? The Civic has been doing its own thing in terms of design since the 1970s. But the city has changed a lot. You know, the first city is nothing like the current city we have here. Uh, even conceptually, they are not the same car. So it's a little bit of a minor complaint, but I do think that they can start to build the character of this car a little bit more in its own way. And now back to something I like, and that is a little bit complex, but it is the powertrain. This is a hybrid car, but it gives you a taste of the electric vehicle lifestyle, EV. And it does so in a very, very clever way. In traffic, in low speed, when you stop like this, the battery in the back is powering everything. It's, it's powering the aircon, which, you know, doesn't get warm. It's actually as cold as it normally gets. And then it's powering all your accessories. And then when you go into drive and you start moving, we're moving on electric power. The engine is still off. And it can do this up to very, very high speeds. If you have enough charge, you can actually drive as an EV for 
a pretty prolonged period of time. So it is an EV effectively at low speeds. And then the petrol engine can drive the wheels when it's more efficient for that to happen, or it can just charge the battery. So essentially the system is super efficient, very, very little energy is wasted using the EHEV system. And now I think the last dislike is pretty minor. This car is a little bit loud at highway speed. And it's funny because when you're going slowly, when you're going on electric power, this is the quietest car in the segment. You know, you're going up to like 50, 60 in the city. Before the engine comes on, it's very, very, very quiet. But then the moment the engine comes on and you're driving at a highway speed, 110, it's no longer the quietest car. And in fact, I think the Yaris, the Vios, the outgoing models with the petrol engine, it's just a tad quieter. The high speed highway cruising, I wouldn't say it's bad, it's just starkly different from the low to medium speed drives. That's my dislike. I just think that contrast is a bit too much. And now back to Subash outside. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to view the sights and sounds of this car, it's over here. The petrol version's over here. And uh, there'll be more links in the description for other city-related content. Bye-bye.